What's up guys? Welcome to the uh, Fly70 YouTube channel. Uh, something I'm just starting here. Um, mainly going to be a lot of fly tying uh, instruction videos. But eventually I'm going to include some uh, product reviews and also some uh, edits of me and my uh, buddies fishing out on the water. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to start with one of my favorite uh, nymph patterns. Uh, you know, something I use, you know, quite frequently when I get to the stream more often than not, uh, this is what's attached to my uh, tippet. So um, it's the Frenchie and it's, you know, something that imitates a lot of different aquatic insects. I'd say 90% of my uh, nymph box are either pheasant tail variations or hare's ear variations, which both imitate quite a bit of aquatic insects rather than just focusing in on one particular insect which you know does help uh, you know catch more fish so um, let's get started here uh, what I have in the vise is a TMCO 5262 uh, size 14 nymph hook it's a 2x long 2x heavy hook and on the hook I have a 764 gold tungsten bead and then on the hook shank, there's some 0 .015 lead wire, about eight wraps or so. And I have that shoved up into the bead to kind of help keep the bead in place. And then I'll start, in this case, I'll take some UTC70 thread in fluorescent pink. And I'll just start it right behind the bead, or excuse me, right behind the lead wire. And make a few wraps back, cut off the excess. and then wrap back forward and up over the lead wire which will just kinda help keep that in place and then I'll wrap back to about the hook point and at that point I'll attach some tailing fibers which in this case is some whiting Coke de Leon tailing fibers in the light pardo color. Uh, I used to use pheasant tail fibers on all my Frenchies, um, but I recently made an investment in the uh, whiting tailing pack, and it is a great investment. Um, they are much more durable than pheasant tail fibers, and in my opinion, they also look much better. They have an awesome speckling to them which you know really stands out and just makes it look good so I'll grab you know a clump of those you know eight to ten or so and instead of measuring them out from the beginning what I'll do is I'll just attach these fibers to the top of the hook shank with a couple loose wraps and then I'll kind of just pull on these butt ends until I get the length of the tail I want, which is about you know three quarters to a hook shank in length. And once I get it where I want it, I'll just kind of pull up a little bit on the tail ends of those and wrap back to about the point where the barb of the hook is. And I'll just grab these butt ends here and snip them out of there. And then wrap forward. And at that point I'll take some brassy sized gold ultra wire. And I'll cut off about a three or four inch section of that, which is enough to make at least, you know, two or three flies. And I'll just take the end of this gold wire and I'll butt it up against those lead wraps and secure it to the near side of the hook shank. And then I'll wrap back to the point where the tail starts and then I'll grab my body material 
which for the Frenchie is just some pheasant tail fibers. Uh, you can use natural pheasant tail. Uh, I just so happen to have some pheasant tail that's dyed in a, a dark brown color. And you can even, you know, variate the color of pheasant tail you use based on, you know, the color of dubbing you're going to use for the collar and the thread that you're using. But a brown or a natural, for the most part, is, is pretty standard. So I'll cut off about eight of those. And then I'll grab them by the tips. And I'll cut the tips off square, which kind of just makes it easier to tie them in. And then kind of hold those at a 45 degree angle. And secure them to the hook shank. And then again, wrap back to just the point where your tail starts. Right about there, and then wrap forward. And then at that point, what I'll do is I'll just kind of wrap back about halfway, and then wrap forward, and then wrap back about half of that and wrap forward again, just to kind of create a nice taper to the fly. And then I'll wrap forward and end my thread about a half a bead's length behind the bead, just to give me room to add the collar of the fly. So once I have those pheasant tail fibers in place, I'll just grab them by the butt and I'll use the rotary feature on my Renzetti vise and just make nice even open spiral wraps up the hook shank and end about the point where my thread is and take a couple wraps behind those pheasant tail fibers and then a few wraps in front here to really lock them down. And then I'll cut off the waist there. Okay, and I'll take the wire and I'll counter wrap it in the opposite direction, which kind of helps add some durability to the fly and it gives it a nice ribbing. About four wraps should do it with the size 14. And again, just make a couple wraps behind and a couple wraps in front and just really lock this wire in place so that it doesn't move. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of use my bobbin as a stabilizer and just helicopter this wire off. Like that. And then for the collar, I like to use hairline UV ice dub. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using some UV shrimp pink, uh, but I also tie the Frenchie in, you know, a bunch of different colors. This is where you can really get creative with this fly and, you know, change it up and just figure out what the fish in your area like. Um, I also tie it in the caddis green. Uh, I tie it in uh, some UV purple and UV pink. But like I said, you can really just change the color of your dubbing, you know, based on what the fish like in your area. Um, you can change the pheasant tail color as well. You can change the thread color, uh, even the wire color. So I'll grab a nice clump of this UV ice dub, more than I really need. And then I'll just kind of feather out some fibers with my right hand. and twist the dubbing noodle onto the thread. 
and all you'll really need is about two inches or so of uh, tightly wrapped dubbing and you're going to start right about where that pheasant tail ends and actually add a little more here kind of helps if you wet your fingers when you're dealing with ice dub and some more synthetic dubbings it just kind of helps make the noodle go on there a little easier so once I have that dubbed what I'll do then is just form a little collar with this thread that adds a little hot spot to the fly and I want it to be kind of tucked in behind the bead here and you don't want your collar to be real wide so just kind of keep it right in behind the collar or right in behind the bead and once you get it built up there to the point where it starts to look about the same diameter as the dubbing what I'll do is I'll take my whip finish tool and just do a couple three or four turn whip finishes so there's one and there's two and that's it then you can just kind of cut off the excess thread here and then you can add some uh, head cement or some UV clear fly finish if you'd like but I found that making successive whip finishes uh, on the thread kind of helps secure everything well enough and I haven't had a, a fly come apart yet doing that so um, and then you can kind of pick out this dubbing a little bit with your fingers or a bodkin or something just to kind of give it a more natural buggy look um, but but that's it that's the Frenchie it's pretty simple to tie pretty quick um, and it really works well um, something that you're going to want to tie a lot of uh, something that you're going to fish on the bottom so you know you're going to lose quite a bit but you know like I said it's really effective for me for me here uh, in central Pennsylvania and so um, give it a try you know you can change up the dubbing color like I said you can really really get creative with this fly uh, good luck and like uh, like share subscribe and look out for more to come thank you